This is an overview of Hooke's Law. The video includes both the force treatment as well as the derived elastic potential energy from Hooke's Law. There are also examples presented. Because the video is long, please refer to the description to skip to its parts that are relevant to you. Solids have a tendency to resist deformation. When the solid returns to its original shape, we refer to that as elastic. The force pushing or pulling by that solid in order to return to its original shape is referred to as the restoring force. Hooke's law states that the elastic restoring force is linearly proportional to the displacement from equilibrium and opposite in direction. This is applicable for small deformations of solids only. For larger deformations, non-linearities come into play and there may be more terms to the function. We can represent this relationship in a graph. We set up axes for displacement and force, and we will get a straight line with a negative slope. Remember, going in the negative direction does not mean that the force is decreasing, rather, because force is a vector, the negative sign just means a direction. The magnitude of the force is increasing with displacement. The slope is going to be negative k. K is the linear proportionality constant, generically referred to as the elastic constant. It is the slope of such graph even when you are dealing with, for example, a stiff spring where there is an offset of force before deformation occurs. Here is a visual example. A mass is tied to a spring placed on a frictionless surface and then pulled towards the right for a small displacement. There will be a tendency for the spring to return to equilibrium. Hence, the displacement is towards the right 
and the force is to the left. The proportionality constant between them is now referred to as the spring constant measured in newtons per meter. Here is a mathematical example. We have measurements of the spring force at two different displacements. We are asked to deduce the spring constant. Always start by reading the problem, taking note of the known quantities, as well as what is being asked for. Because forces are vectors, you will still want to set up a diagram. For problems involving springs, you will want to take note of Hooke's law. Set up the equation for the spring constant. Keep in mind the warning that the spring constant would be calculated by the differences in the forces over the differences by the displacements. Plug in bit units, keeping in mind that your spring constant will be a positive number with units of newtons per meter. As always, your final step is to reread the problem and check that the quantities are sensible. Now let's take a look at the energy treatment of elastic deformation. In summary, a spring obeying Hooke's law will be associated with a potential energy equal to one half kx squared. The units of energy, as always, are joules. I will now demonstrate the derivation of spring potential energy in algebraic terms using similar steps as for gravitational potential energy. I will start by applying a force to stretch against the force of the spring. This will pump energy into the system. As long as this is done slowly, without changing the kinetic energy of the system, then the acceleration is zero and the applied force will have a magnitude equal to kx.
unlike our previous derivation for gravity, now we have a force that is not constant with displacement. Thus, before calculating the work done by the applied force, we need to find its average through the displacement. For simplicity, we'll take our starting point at zero displacement with zero force. Because the applied force is linear with displacement, the average force through the displacement will be equal to the arithmetic average at the midpoint. We plug this expression for the average force in. along with the displacement and the cosine of the angle is just 1 because the applied force is in the same direction as the displacement. The result will be the work done by the applied force and hence will be the spring potential energy. For students who have taken calculus, you can repeat the derivation with a similar setup using the dot product definition for work. To understand the example for spring potential energy, please review conservation of mechanical energy. In this example, we have a mass pressed against a spring before it is launched, and we are to find the speed after it leaves the spring. Because this is a conservation of energy problem, take note of the relevant quantities, especially what variables are changing, and take note of what is being asked. Because there are at least two events, you will want to draw the picture for both with the relevant variables. Set up the equation for conservation of energy. Simplify it, if you can, for energies that are zero. Expand the expression before simplifying further, noting that unlike with gravitational potential energy, the mass will not cancel.
solve for the unknown. Then plug in the numbers with units, being careful with squares and square roots. When dealing with such complex units, remember that newtons are equivalent to kilograms meters per second squared. Always finish by rereading the problem.